Greetings, this is Frina Riamentra. I welcome you to Critical Role's uh, 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 Camping 3, Saga vs. Hells. Uh, uh, Hells. It is the second part of, down, of Downfall. A, record, a recording I've shown to the main campaign of the final days of Aeor. It is also of Camping... Of the Saga of Bell's Hells, Camping 3, this is the 100th episode. Don't ask me how many uh, total episodes co there has been. Oh, uh, okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oops, sorry. And to start off with, well, uh, let's see if Sam can get back Welcome into the tonight's episode of Critical Role, where a bunch of us nerdy-ass voice actors sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> uh, before we jump into our episode tonight, uh, we do have some quick announcements, including our sponsor, Forum. And Sam, real, actual Sam, is finally back to do an ad. Uh, what do you have for us? Well, thanks, Matt. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm back to uh, uh, oh. to read the ad. Uh, <laughs> Thorum they they handcraft unique 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 wedding bands out of everything from dinosaur bone to whiskey. I'm sorry to whiskey barrel. Whiskey barrel, hey, buddy. Yeah. Are are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, now Thorum makes mini miniature. Sorry, minimalist watches featuring Hawaii, Hawaiian koa wood, meteorite, and California red. Sorry, uh, and also uh, pendant necklaces. Sam, what? What's the matter? Sorry, I, I've got these props, but they're not really helping, and I think I'm just out of practice. Oh, you, think, you were literally wearing a hat uh, on a hat. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to say you're. I, so I lost my touch, no, guys. No, no, no. Yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. I think that's the case. Sam, Sam, li listen to me. Listen, you are the fakest person I know. Really? <laughs> um, there's not a sincere bone in your body. You mean it? <sighs> your superpower is selling product and doing it in a way that makes people actually believe you. Yeah, yeah I mean, you you're, you're an incredible liar. Yeah. 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 Born yeah. con man. Yeah. <laughs> Watch, I, I will demonstrate. Thorum ships every ring within one business day for free, comes with a lifetime warranty, and has over 10,000 five-star reviews. Yeah, that's bad. It's, it's, it's pretty, pretty rough. rough. Yeah. I, I'm not, that was, I, I did not convince you. Mm. <laughs> but now watch when you do it. Okay, okay. Whether you need a wedding ring, anniversary ring, or just want a ring that looks awesome, head to thorum.com and use code CRITICALROLE. How's that? Yeah. Oh, that oh, that I'm just going to buy one right now. Yeah. Falseness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Human sham. Yeah. Gaping yeah. buttholes. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Matt, back to you. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh there we go. <laughs> uh, Marisha, you're up next. <laughs> well, we all get rusty. <laughs> I believe that concludes our announcements. So. Oh, it's the stand up! Oh, it's the You gotta stay fed. You gotta keep the calories oh, up. Oh yeah. Let them eat cake. I like the state <laughs> of your shirt. Here's now. If you want to know the magic, <laughs> the magic of role playing. Yep. You observe, mortal viewer. Pizza stains on my shirt. <laughs> Behold, for when we come back from the opening titles, <laughs> a miracle will have unfolded. Perhaps the will. Of the gods themselves. <laughs> God is in charge of that. <laughs> 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 I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, you think it's funny now? There's a very long clip later. A couple of long clip, clips later on one part. This will have you busting a gun. Billy Mays on the Um For when we return. Stain shall have been parted from cloth as the light is parted from the darkness. Okay? Everyone's laughing it up, and I am fucking deadly serious, okay? Make sure the Ravens here. You need help getting stains out of your dress? <laughs> I've been dipping these raven feathers in pizza grease all morning. I want you to watch what happens next. Um, uh, we return after these titles to the flying city of Aeor. As those of you who watched last week know, primes, betrayers, side by side with the impossible choice before them. Pepperoni or pineapple? <laughs> Porque no los dos. <laughs> Downfall continues in tonight's episode of Critical Role. Uh. Groups preparing to travel out from this place. Not much of a recap. But for those who are wondering... Uh, oh, uh, um, oh, wait, okay, uh, place. Asha and the emissary are preparing to move with Tishar, a tall, hulking barbarian woman with a massive double handed greatsword on her back, and Zaharsht, a rusty metal in his flesh, sort of albino. Hulking bar. Okay, so we're the, they're playing it as the avatars of the prime deities. Barbarian woman with a massive double handed greatsword on her back. And they're teamed up with four, them and one other of the prime deities are teamed up with four uh, uh, betrayer gods. This barbarian woman, um, Forget what her. Uh, the blonde is about the barber. Yeah. Uh, I think they talk about the Zaharst, a spiky, tortle, sort of albino, sick. Basically confirmed to be the avatar of Torog, God Crawling King, Lord of Torture. These green eyes, looks like some subterranean spiky turtle uh, with hooks and jagged chunks of rusty metal in his flesh. They prepare to head to the Obtenebrator engine in the Genesis Ward, in the center of the city, which disguises the city from divine sight and scrying. Silaha, the Aormaton, and Emira are preparing to leave in the company of Umleta, a small halfling archer, to make use of Salaha's connections within the magocratic city of Aeor, searching for rumors or clues to the Aerovox protocol, the means by which should 
the magistry of Aeor become aware of a threat to their great project, the knowledge of that project would be transcribed and sent to the far corners of Exandria, one last failsafe to ensure that the knowledge of how to destroy the gods would not be lost to mortal kind. And finally, Arcadia, your companion and ally here within the city, and Father Milo, a priest of the Dawn Father, accompanying Aiden and Trist, searching for passage somehow into the Genesis Ward. Highly secretive, the arcane heart of Aeor where its greatest secrets, some of which will be discovered many years from now under the icy frost of Isilcross. But in this day, they are at the zenith of their power. Uh, is there anything that you do or say to each other as you prepare to disembark from the Chamber of Secrets? Uh, Chamber of Seasons. <laughs> Chamber of Seasons. Switch it up! <laughs> Edit. I HBO, thing. I didn't mean it. I'm so fucking sorry. <laughs> <laughs> From the Chamber of Seasons. Um, that made that uh, several times. Yeah. Are the, <laughs> I know that. Um, oh man. Uh, I know that. And one more tip before we get on. Uh, as Umleta comes to join you, um, you see that she looks up at you and smiles, and you see that she has this just sort of like roguish almost, and you see that she carefully takes this silken rope and begins to pack it around an elbow and a hand, creating a little coil that she tucks into this large black bag on her back. Um, she looks up at you and goes... You're stunning. Hmm. I wish I could say the same thing about you. <gasps> Aren't I a little bit cute, though? No. I was only joking. <laughs> Jesting. <laughs> you know, we're not going to have these bodies for that much longer. I wonder how much we could sell your parts for. Hmm. I wonder how, many, how much your ears go for, too. <laughs> Come get them. Hmm. Uh, they do a, a perception check on, on this halfling over, and they notice, like, almost ha her having some cobwebs or threads uh, around and pulling the thing. And, that, and between that and the screaming guard, it has basically confirms that this is the mortal avatar of the uh, goddess Loth, Spider Queen. Queen in deity of the drow. And uh Sil Silha B uh oh if I recall uh Silha uh, is the uh somewhat mortal avatar. Uh he yeah, he's an Amazon so they can don't have a natural black fan, um, as far as I know, of Corleon, 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 Cor Corleon, or uh, and which means uh, this it means these two, the deities are exes. <laughs> For uh, future reference, and uh, in order to make sure they're all up to date, he uh, does ask them try to get, get, confirm how long they've been in the city. Like the patriarchs of the city. Well, they said they just arrived because of, there's something off, and he doesn't believe them. He kind of get, get grades an angry outfit, which, um, I found, who that, who, though, as he walks towards you, you can see she gets it like, why did I let him get her? 
Then we go to the emissary who does a in like his own check um like a investigation or perception check on the mural of the, uh, the law banner and receives receives vision from from the from his mistress. Well, the question is simple. It, it asks him a simple thing. Is she cross with me? It referring to... Uh, this refers to uh, Asha, a uh, talisman character, who is the avatar of Melora, goddess of nature, who's, in her, as, who's uh, sort of also the lover of Erratus the Lawbearer. The fact that her absent that she, that she her avatar did not show up in person is still quite a sore spot, so she is sad. The law we actually is here we start getting partial explanation um, as to uh, 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 um, uh, 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 uh. It, we get partial in, in, in information about why uh, uh, the avatar er, Erasmus's avatar did not show up. These are directly controlled by the gods; like they are aspects of the god. Uh, and one thing she noticed, and. And while she still loves uh, Melora and still loves, wants to be with her, she has seen what their direct interact intervention has done to the plan before between like the battle of the schism, like to up to the the clan the hundred year of years that the clan has been going on already, which it's nearly wiped out a, a two thirds population of Exandia. When they, uh, try, <laughs> uh, oh, uh, basically, when they get involved, yeah, the signal and destruction happens. And I think she kind of made a promise not to. to Further create more destructive. Death. As such, she feels as if her direct presence there, well, while it would fulfill their promise to them, to the rest of the prime communities, would violate another promise. Like it is a choice between two promises. And this is unsaid, but keep, we do know that there is some hidden property or power within the embassy. Something that probably cannot exist was not existing in the. Avatar's form. And then when he go to what to do, uh, uh, and try to uh, ha see more guidance on what to do here, he have reports that not to go with half measures. Like it is nothing like you think it'll help if you like only ha ha uh, 
They say, give it all and go everything. For no one will thank you if you own they take it halfway. Don't look. Asha turns to leave, emissary. You see Asha. Uh, Zaharsh walking behind her. You see Tishar looks at you. You're not her. Sent the puppet. Was she scared? Maybe this time I remember Vasselheim. Don't let my left arm down so much. She turns to walk. Uh, we also have some high rolls over here. Uh, we got a 29 insight, and... Uh, I really just want to go to a tavern with the Betrayer guy. <laughs> <laughs> Pub crawl, pub crawl. Yeah, 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 pub crawl. It's just like... I think, I think, uh, if, if it can be, I think it, I think it would have been a perception. Cool. Um, Father Marla, who, who, who is the mortal avatar of, uh, as Bodhi's Lord of the Hells, and uh, quite frankly, he's having quite a bit of fun pretending, uh, like taking the form of a priest of Pelor. Mm-hmm. Where were we? Here. Tells them that while a lot of the higher ups are keeping like guarded well stuff and protected stuff, stuff, and they had a lot of security in the sections, everything are like has like a backbone that it runs off of and like stuff for the artificer guilds and stuff. They're they are not so high ranked as they easily be recognized and stuff, uh, like individuals, well, but they have active power to keep things running. Like go. Basically, um, go, like try to assume the forms of or get information off of the serving, well, the serving classes. Okay, Aiden. Well, the notice something it, it, on the pews, something wrapped, wrapped in cloth and hidden there. He doesn't want to. Show exactly what it is to in front of the chair, so, so he kind of surreptitiously goes, goes to dog outside. Start starting with a prayer. Um, prayer. Um, not to any one particular one of them, but rather to what they used to be as a group before the schism, like to uh. The divine family. As he does this, Trish can also say, they also swear, but Trish can say additional prayers. One performed in that very temple within that week. A prayer is for a son. A boy named Pallas. To get well, uh, prayers made by an archmage of Aeor. It's a, a shocking thing to, for prayer in the city. Shocking, even more shocking that it comes from an archmage. Uh, Aiden picks, finally gets to check out what the object is. 
an old prayer a book of prayers. It, it, it this is, shows old stuff it, based on the text stuff. Predates it had made no one of the major events of calamity. I mean, this predates it many by many a uh, a a century. At earliest, I can put it is like like in the like um last few days of the schism. When, as I said, Cuban Alexandria had the most potential. Mm -hmm. And they freely gave magic away. To this, find this world be, from before Age of Arcan is especially something that mean, would mean something to them. Mm -hmm. Tris goes to Umleta to ask uh, for uh, mm, uh, uh, to, to give uh, to finally be able to trace the threads back to the mm, oh, uh, oh, uh, back to whoever originally had it. Um, that made the prayer. Though the mature girls are a little skeptical making this. They do put like just like helping out someone. Yeah. You know, just to check it make sure something's uh, uh 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 they do point out that in the vision they saw the prayer person prayer. It, it was an archmage, so someone who can get, get have useful information should they do a a service for them. Uh, as uh, as Umleta uh, uh, like draws out a thread to track, um, uh, am here, am here, oh, oh. Amhira, uh, being avatar of the Raven Queen, checks it. It's it to see the f fate of the on whom the prayers were on the hand stuff. The child is gives a child greatly ill, and could though no not though this illness will not claim it soon though. They, his life might be in danger by their actions tonight. But unaided, this kid child shall not see adulthood. But with it, could be fully healed. And the threat, his life thread is not fully in her, do her domain's grasp. Uh, dearest, uh, Imhira's raven is sent out uh, to try to track the prayer and finds it, it leads nearby to a hospital with, uh, within the Opus Ward, where they, the very ward they're in. Now we're down looking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, um, Stuff. Um, so uh, they keep no. Uh, they prepare to deploy. Um, another one. They give he, another mark is given to, like if they must disguise themselves as people they are, a go for more like mid level, like not higher ups that whose faces could be easily recognized individually, but not so low as uh, 
like as some of the places they go, they had out, out no other business being there. Looks and says, Well, without faith, we are nothing. <laughs> Let us hope that our way is lit. Uh, and he strides in this place <sighs> as Arcadia. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's having a hard time. I love him. I'm having a hard time because I I quite like him and quite despise him. <laughs> Welcome to Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> um, uh, it used to be so cool. Incredible. It used to be so fucking cool, man. What happened? Um, oh, yes. I just want to know with the telepathy that binds us all. Does that? Okay. And then each group goes their separate ways to complete the task. Uh, <laughs> one traveling by tram, go to heading toward the. Um, I think it's the one. He and just on the upskit, the uh, cloaking device basically goes invisible to. Um, Trish and Aiden stand the Obus Ward, yeah, hard up. Uh, and with them goes Milo. They do notice like there is a uh, that the betrayers are giving each other nasty glances when they think the others aren't looking. So uh, clearly, they don't like them almost as much or as much as they don't hate the betray the, the primes. So should they try, should they try something that that's not part of their agreement? They have options, not and not just having to be. No. <sighs> uh, after uh, as they drive to the air, to the generator, um. Asha tries to talk to the law bearer through the embassy. Though he ha doesn't have a lot of the answers she seeks. You made her a forest with rules. And I open a massive stone hand. Where the seedling. One thing she says is like she made this force. She gave it he, rules and stuff for, in order to, like, as a sort of gift to the lover. I started to sprout into a gorgeous, large sycamore seed. Her first forest for you. Would be a better gift, how typical. <laughs> um. uh, a very secret place, uh, hidden behind a large industrial door. Uh, Doors open. <laughs> uh, uh, doors open, and a small chamber departs in the R's district. This is in the group of Emira, Silaha, and Umleta. 
So whose idea was it to have the exes travel together? They travel through this. <laughs> arcane uh, glass blowing factory. Here's where here's where you might want to make sure you're sitting down. Almost like the wheel to a vault door. Uh, and as Silaha approaches, the lock it's opens long, but... to Oculi uh, and beholds you. <gasps> Silaha! <gasps> An honor and a gift. We did not think we would be receiving you this evening. The gift is mine. <gasps> Always an honor to make a path for the chosen one. <laughs> and the head spins around. Uh, and as it spins it's around, so cool. um, uh, you see this aorm. <laughs> uh, this aormaton, who is just a stationary lock at the back of this factory, um, <laughs> turns around, and suddenly um, you hear music and you see steps. Beautiful marble, long hanging blue banners, a curving marble bar, liquor whoo, up around. And you look a mirror and see a sea of a like marble and then like red velvet cushioned grotto, dancing little lights as sort of uh, arcane automata fireflies begin to spin through space. And up on a massive bandstand, you see that a gorgeous aormaton constructed of black steel within a white platinum chest piece, almost like a tuxedo, uh, comes out and says, ladies, gentlemen, designations heretofore unmentioned. I am your master of ceremonies, chorus. And what a wonderful evening to behold. Please welcome your proprietor, the Chosen One. The banners shimmer, and you see images of Salaha's face <laughs> all over. Uh, <laughs> you also see my eyes go no. from like orange to green. The no. gold shimmering uh, that you saw on my kind of metal body begins to just engulf my body as I turn into this golden aeromaton, and I just raise my arms. Yes. Uh, the, whole, <laughs> the whole place no. cheers. Amira, you see you see that that your friend, <laughs> your brother, has been fully cheating as worship funnels into him. Yeah. Whoosh. Um, well, the chosen worship. one! And it's just steel hands clapping as hard as they can. Um, you see that Chorus says, Salaha, proprietor of the Ars Elysia, we welcome you with open arms and other probasi as well. And you see that, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you see also, there are, this is mostly aormatons. You see that on a bench, there are two aormatons that have these like soft chain link lips that are kissing passionately on a bench. There's so many people that are like cheersing, cheersing with like drinks from the bar. You see there's a multi-eight-armed Aormaton bartender behind the bar pouring drinks in this. And you also feel a wave of powerful arcane might <laughs> hiding this place from detection as this grotto of poetry and beauty and passion unfolding in the heart of brutalist Aeor unfolds in this place. As Chorus <laughs> said, uh, you look around and there's a, you see there's a couple humans here. There's one human partially disrobed with an Aormaton lover sitting on their lap. You look over in the other place, you see that there appear to be some demons that are taking off their bindings and <laughs> winking as they hand their bindings away. Um, Umleta. Uh, <laughs> Tells like, where, 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 is, where, where is this place? Get... How, I went on the wrong list. Give me the Instagram, man. Wait, where is this 
place? What is, where's the password? Do I need a card? Who do I call? Wrong God. Wrong mission. Just start a reverse bondage club. Like, <laughs> <laughs> What's taking off the bed? Yeah. Uh, you see, um, uh, you see, Omleta sort of looks around as two Ooh. massive constructs that have little like. Uh, like little cuff links on fabric cuffs on massive weaponized arms. Be like, your weapons, please, my like, Yeah, I kind of turn and like, oh, it's a no weapons policy here, darling. And Leda goes, <laughs> well, I don't know how possible that's going to be, Salaha. And uh, puts oh. the, uh, gives her bow and arrow over. Um, and you see, as you begin to descend the steps, uh, Chorus says, uh, Patrons of the Ars Elysia, the drinks are cold, the band is hot, and what the gods cannot see, I'll never tell. Two, three, four, and the band <laughs> strikes up and <laughs> just starts playing, and there's just so many Aormatons dancing, like one of them spinning a human mortal around, uh, and you guys walk down uh, into this incredible grotto. And I go straight for like the little private section area and just sort of sit, but I can see everything and everyone can see me. And I just sort of sit there and I'm like, <sighs> uh, Almost 30 years I've been on Exandria this time and have never found a place like this. Oh, you've been missing out. <laughs> um, a beautiful Aormaton dancer walks up, and you see that she comes over with a small, chilled bottle uh, of what looks like some sort of elven wine and places it in front of you. Uh, and then you see she takes a small decanter, this little golden bottle uh, that looks like it has a form of synthetic oil in it. And you see that she says, chosen one, the finest, and hands it over to you and says, may I? Please. And you see that she pours some on your artificed joints and begins to rub them in uh, with these mm. fingers. Um. <laughs> what are we doing here? We're supposed to be finding information. I mean, please, go. Have fun. Enjoy. Ask questions. It's totally free and fun over here. Salaha. Yes. You know, there... <laughs> there is a purpose to this. Mm-hmm. And Just we do robotic have hands a, right in those lats as you're yeah. having this conversation. We do have a, a finite amount of time. Mm. Mm. Yes. <laughs> finite. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking... If, please, actually, just, could, could, we have the, could, could we have the space, please? Oh, very well. Um, you see that uh, the sort of uh, Aormaton dancer says, I am Tuar Eloan. Is there any way that I can make you feel good? Yes, but in maybe later. <laughs> Very well. She bows and walks away. You see, Umleta looks around and says, you are a clown. <laughs> <laughs> Go join the circus then. <laughs> she says, fine. I'll get to work. And you see that she uh, slinks off into the shadows. Um, uh, she can call you a clan all you want. You see that Salah is like glowing with worship. Yeah. <laughs> well, I kind of look to you and I'm like, look. Uh, then he gets to an interesting point that, um, would it be so bad if we were to end, like, come on, one thing is, he sort of, is a deity of, is be a beauty, it's like, for him, he said, beauty is finite. Mm hmm Yeah. So, probably get along with the Toro. Hi, um, hi, uh, he said, what makes things a lot of you is that they are limited. They are only have so much time to exist. Zalon claims to be tired. And maybe it'd be best to let it end. Uh, though for only for Anna Dorana, the others don't wish to end. 
I can understand it. The like I'm sort of seeing to see the desire like to see end, but it being God's of death, but they have a job to do here, and the others aren't ready to uh, just end yet. And so they ask more questions, and uh, to look, you see that there is a elven woman weeping, uh, holding onto her face, and you see that an Aormaton woman is down on one knee, lasers moving from her fingertips as she moves them in space, and wrought in pure magic before her begins a diamond that moves then into gold and forms a ring. And the Armaton woman hands it up. The elven woman begins weeping and you see Chorus, the master of ceremonies, says, Beautiful! Love eternal here within the Oz Elysia! Uh, and you watch as the uh, woman picks up the Aormaton and twirls her around, and they begin dancing on the dance floor. Well, I guess we better put ourselves to work. I don't actually trust that halfling to do anything out here, except cause more mayhem. That was the part I was looking for. They will ask some questions of the bartender, the body art bartender. Um, do learn or try to get tracked down. Like, oh, in addition to knowledge on the probable tree hunter, they also won't try to forget knowledge on the angels that supposedly appeared. Trimming the edge of X Teneman. Um, for X that appears to just carbonate things as the glass is enchanted, like liquors go into it and <laughs> bubbles start to pour up. Uh, you see Four X Teneman. Um, four X has a perfectly spherical head with a ring of like bronze around it, and four oculi so he can kind of look in all directions. He looks over. <laughs> Boss, good to see you. Weren't expecting you tonight. Oh, Forex, the old seeing, all knowing. Please, tell me, how have you been? How have I been? B -b 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 busy, always busy. Mm. Hi, miss, can I get you a drink? No. Forex, we're wondering if you could help us. <laughs> Don't mind my friend over here. Still needs to wet her appetite a bit. We are looking for some information, delicate information. Tell me. <clears throat> if you're looking for delicate information, we got some lingerie someone threw on top of the top shelf. <laughs> it's been a c -c -c crazy night. Zoom, whole do torso we, spins around. But do we really have to get rid of this? He's, <laughs> he's wonderful. Just transport him somewhere else. <laughs> Fine. Um... Um, he looks over uh, and says, you sure I can't get you anything? Sure. Um, you hear from within your robes, I wouldn't mind a drink. <laughs> and the little glass imp cage in there sort of speaks to you. I look down. He goes, he looks up out of the glass, like, huh? up at your face and says, I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but... Everything that happened in that chamber was so crazy. I think you, I think you guys are the gods. Am I wrong? Oh, no. God, security breach. We've been compromised. We've been compromised. That was so nuts. Oh. You see, I won't. I won't tell. I won't tell. He was sealed. I thought he was sealed. <laughs> 
He was just like... <laughs> Lefty Lucy, <laughs> righty tiny, <laughs> not sex. I'm like, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm looking at you, looking down, I'm like... Oh, she goes, oh. Is everything all right? <laughs> in your head, oh, in your head, yeah. you hear... Imp. In my boobs. <laughs> and then all, you, all you hear is, oh, dear. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, I look down and I go, well, what would you like? Uh, I am called Slitch, and S- I am an imp, it. but you, I think I, from clues from how you spoke, if you are... Come out. Am I allowed out? Just sit down. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to talk to my boobs. <laughs> that makes one of us. And you see, he pops, he pops out on the bar. Uh, looks around. You see a couple demons look over at this little imp. He looks around, and you see he goes, Listen, I am bound to the service of the military might of Aeor, but I would love a chance to betray. <laughs> okay. I am Slitch. You are... I think, if I am not much mistaken, maybe the goddess of death? Oh, shit. <laughs> Just from some of the things you said, you had a, you were talking about death and endings, and I, I am very clever, and this is a huge, I'm not, I think it should be obvious, this is an absolutely enormous opportunity for me. <laughs> Glean oh, from my from my knowledge of <laughs> from my knowledge of arcane objects and whatnot. Is he bound to this glass, it, yes. or is he going to be able to escape from me? He, you can tell that he is still bound to the glass, and you can actually feel an aura of about thirty feet. Okay, like I want to make sure he's not going to run. He, you don't he think can't. he? You think if that glass broke, you'd be in trouble? Mm-hmm. But it looks like he's not going to run. Okay, um, you How see. Big is he? He is f- standing on the table about that big. Oh, my God. He's a little guy. Cutie. He's a real Henson ass. He's uh-huh. like like little like pointy red nose, long red bat ears, claws. He got, he's like really bow-legged to stand up. He, he, like, he can't kind of stand straight up. Like, he's... Oh, come see some He appears more comfortable in a partial squat, like his butt lower than his knees, like in the saddle. That's like where he wants to be. So he goes, he goes, several hours before, I was bound to the service of a drunk subway cop. And now I find myself in the company of quite a more powerful host. <laughs> um, look, I'll let you deal with this. Um, and it says twenty big bottles of booze. One bottle of booze. Yay! Forex <laughs> <laughs> goes. I'm giving you a well, and you take something like off the well and hands it over, and you see Slitch goes. If there's any service I can be, I would be more than happy. I have been working for some time as an aide to law enforcement. Great. Can you go invisible? Ah! Disappears. You see the bottle vanish and reappear with a clunk with about a quarter of the liquor missing. I think we can find service for you. They, uh, they do talk, uh, they ask the bartender more about the stuff like they've seen in these heretical the celestials. And he notes that there's been one guy in a club that has been suspicious. Who seems to be having suspicious, so. As he goes to go, I'm going to command and cast command and say sit. Hell yeah, it's about to pop off. Um, uh, 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 incredible. Um, so you're going to cast command. Yes. Um, uh, ba, ba, ba. Yeah, I tried to believe that way. Should be. Hell yeah. Let me know what kind of save that is. Uh, sure. It is a, it's a wisdom save. 
of nine. As they continue, they discover that this is a, is a celestial, specifically a planetar. This is like a higher up angel. Six um, as you say, bad angel. Um, I'm gonna need both of you to roll initiative. <laughs> I cannot see you. Yeah. I need both of you to oh, roll shit. initiative. Um, here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh we're we're really good girl. that our first cosmic bar initiative fight. roll is against. An angel. <laughs> <laughs> this is going well. Okay. Two gods and an angel walk into a bar. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, it's a, what a great game of D&D. We're fighting in a tavern. You know, that's what you want. Yeah. That's what you want at the end of the day. 15. Um, um, 15. We got a 15 here, and what did we get for Amir? Eight. All right, great. Um, uh, well, the good news is eight, um, uh, eight is cut out across the bar. Seven from our wow. buddy that did not roll great. Um, <laughs> Angels, uh, its wings are fully out display instead of like using them to pretend to have a hunch. Well, I'll try and make it attempt to flee. Is it? Um... Hmm. It still uh, tries to make some things, but in the end, it goes to. Um... Uh, a uh, little monster uh, use a whole monster. Well, actually, uh, he is a uh, 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 so Loha tries to cast whole monster but fails him. It may have activates their boost, boots of haste. In class, shadow blades. So. Manage to strike one, two, or twelve things. And, and then. And Silaha, traveling his true divine self. I also get to see him. Um, Whenever they travel more to their divine self, that you could get to see these murals of all of them. <laughs> anyway, uh, he channels his, his the true divine essence and causes the door to trans really turn into a. Uh, Crystalline cage will add, which causes an extra mental space as a return as the door or door, door returns to normal. Uh, Salaha, you're gonna be first to act. You see this celestial, uh, the cape bursts as wings spread out across the bar. It looks like he's going to try to just fly over the dance floor to the door. Extra dimension with space and light and as this aim over this space uh, within the Ars Elysia, as this angel flies and is suddenly stretched through space and light and gone, and you hear silence as Chorus goes, sorry for the interruption, everybody. Let's get this band playing again. Two, three, four. The music picks up as you see your friend at the door, uh, uh, ZVX. Uh, the uh, uh, the Aormaton doorman. <laughs> Big mouthful, boss. Mm. Got him down there. 
Mm -hmm. We'll be joining him shortly. Uh, you see that uh, as this unfolds, what everyone, you witnessed this true thing, what everyone else else here witnessed was a guy jump up from the bar, rush to the door, and kind of disappear in a flash of light as something shocking but unclear. And you see that uh, 2R quickly comes over, the dancer, and says, <laughs> gets rowdy after midnight, and begins to clean up the golden blood off the bar. Uh, Uletta. Uh, you, uh, give me a perception uh. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. God damn it, I suck at perception! Um, me, God, me damn it! Um, <laughs> eight. Uh, eight, okay, gotcha. Um, uh, you, uh, you look, and uh, on an eight perception, you look, and let us know where to be found. Whatever she's up to, you have no idea. Mm -hmm. But you look and see the three demons that were kind of looking, you realize those three demons were sort of like, maybe we'll beat the shit out of this angel. You see that all of them look, and each just kind of look frightened at Salaha and like raise a glass and get up and excuse themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so, um, shall we go join our guest? <laughs> Shadow Blade goes away. Of course. Mm. Uh, and you guys head off towards the door. Uh, sorry to do this a little bit early, but I need a bio break. So we're gonna call it there, <laughs> little bio. We go, return back to, uh, after break, we return back to Aiden, Trist, and Milo. Hello, Trist, Milo, and our Katie. Yeah. Still in the almost way to the hospital there. Now, one thing is denoted is that Aeor is not known for its healing properties and big healing stuff. This, this place, apart from being uh, in a uh, in one of the poor parts of town, is <laughs> sorry. It's not known for healing, Jim. This is run down even for the ward, so, uh, the one. They were very focused on their goals, and healing was not one of them. Uh, the hospital, the Exalted Hospital, is very, seems to be, like, outside view, n is not all in press room. <laughs> Sorry. Father Milo says, do you need some help doing something dishonest? Yes. You see, he walks up and goes, and clasps both hands around the lock. Great dawn, Father. <laughs> <laughs> Wheresoever you might be, open those ways which are barred to us. Let your light peer out. And you see there's a dull red glow within his hands as a melted steel lock pools on the floor. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he... And, okay, and they talked to the person on the front desk, uh, a doctor... Bezel. They try to learn more of this, and they get they through some quotes, careful question. They find out that 
the Arch Mage they saw in the vision what was named uh, Pevin. A uh, cuss, some cuss, the, the cuss of a uh, so she's married. Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, what was the focus? Uh, they enter the hospital and find it is not. Much uh, nicer on the inside. Like some of the things are actually more cutting edge. Like you expect from, like if you are actually caring about the healthcare system. We found out that this law of this comes from Cassidy, oh, uh, Cassida, and if anyone found out, she provided the. Such events thanks to this place, it she would probably be executed. We found out that what ails her son, um, son is something called the wasting. Then suddenly, she appears. Uh, gotcha. Dr. Bezel, I will, uh, I will accompany. You sort of stalk after him. <laughs> and uh, he looks behind. It ever follows. And, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and you see, uh, you are left here with Arcadia and Cassida. Um, Cassida holds it and says, the doctors here have done all they can, and I have... You are left here with Arcadia yeah. and Cassida. Um, Cassida holds it and says, The doctors here have done all they can. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris just lay on Hannah. Uh, we find out that she is secretly a worshiper of the Everlight. So Trish, in, do, in response to her loyalty, he uses lay on hands to heal. Heal uh, is a big thing for her because last time she fully tapped into her powers to aid someone else was when she tried to redeem Asmodeus. That cost her most of her followers on Alexandria. Mm-hmm. Sorry. And uh mm. was betrayed, uh but she ends up going away helping with it. Uh as you look at a young boy <gasps> breathe and have and be the maybe first person in Alexandria to be a Zeroth level commoner with seventy hit points. Somewhere. Um. He goes. <coughs> uh, and she clutches him, and just is heaving, racking sobs as she caresses his head. Uh, as you see. <coughs> And see, there's still light hanging around, and you can even feel in this moment that. Okay, anyway. Mm-hmm. 
हैं Uh, while uh, talking with uh, Milo, I tried to convince him. Uh, Milo tried to do manage to intimidate the uh, doctors there. And expresses that says that they try to say, you know, we could always be friends and family again. Trying to get, but the, there's the betrayers trying to get the gods to side with them against the mortals. Okay, let's see. Um, uh, uh, Aiden believes that it is up to the betrayers, like the the party is now going. It's up to the betrayers to help maintain the truce, which results in in Milo just looking at it. They're not real, Aiden. Okay, and to your point, it, he's kind of like puppets the uh, doctor there until, until finally Aiden casts protection from good and evil and heals his, the injury he's to the uh, to the Aeorn. Okay, one second. And then goes around acting as an aura, healing all the injured as he passes them. We we then learn more about a. About the uh, archmage who uh, she, she word as part of a uh, 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 secret society within AR who not only still works with the prime deities, but hopes to take the research of AR to, against Anti God and use it against specifically the betrayers to win the, the war of calamity. The um, to use the uh. Awesome, which would be a great help if uh, they weren't currently in the middle of an alliance. Legends, the schism. Time and time again, you have had to come and defend us from primordials, from betrayers, over and over and over again. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. oh, God. oh God. We are finally at the threshold where we can join you and make a difference, side by side. <laughs> this is fucking great. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, mm. oh. And we are going to move from here. <laughs> oh. Oh. I like that you hugged him and he was something awesome, and you're like, hey, man. Uh, okay. Um, uh, <laughs> I love this. I'm gonna kill your brother. I'm gonna, uh, <laughs> yes. I got you. Tight, 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 tight. I got you something. Mm. About that. Uh, incredible. Um, um, we are going to now move back uh, to um, the 
Genesis Ward as the tram comes into the station. Um, Asha and the Emissary. There they meet the sign of the parade ground. Um, so, and so we're to hear the formal go, and then make some notes. Most important, most interesting, there is it seems to be a, a tree left over from one that say was more, um, was a, a Spartan in nature. Okay, and uh, this, uh, uh, according to this, this was a gift uh, left by the golden side. So this could, tree has been around since perhaps the Eastern Age of Parham, like a gift from another majocracy city from in the sky. He starts giving nature, telling my mom, Talking to the with the birds is um and, and Asha really was able to talk to the birds and do con getting information off them, such as they used to be a lot more trees and stuff in nature. And it, you could still find something you could look around. A patrol ship checks the station that you just left uh, uh, uh stopped at, uh, so uh they they need to keep a low profile. There and tries to get more information, and then uh, takes his apple core out and channels his power into it, crushing it, allowing it to spawn many um, larvae and su such for food for the for the nest of birds. Mm -hmm. And they even go and feed uh, the uh, uh, roots of the tree, and the roots that side go and burrow more underground and create a passageway. The tree moving and pushing apart wide enough for you to slip inside. <laughs> That's, so cool. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> we'll speak more. You will hear me. Tell all that matter. Uh, the birds flit off through Aeor. <laughs> Um, you feel your temple growing. Mm -hmm. And uh, he gets a little more reports. There is hidden light everywhere from you know, stuff, just stuff like hidden rats and stuff. And these are potential allies for later on. teeth but I know what mother sees in her Tishar sneers hate to be on the mission with the couple <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> had jokes. Runer's got jokes. Um, um, uh, um, um, uh, you move through this space and Asha, as you move forward, you watch roots and this leaves the sort of dense potted soil that supported this tree and the this is complete, and they go. They keep going down until they reach this large metal pipe or metal sewer wall. I 
feel it. I do not understand it. What is it? You, Tashar looks over to you and says, Understand? It troubles us. There's nothing more beautiful than to destroy the things we don't understand. <laughs> Even when we were family, you scared me. Good. Maybe all that time ago I make a mistake, huh? Just to another one. And she cleaves a hole in the pipe and peels it apart and moves through it. Uh, we're going to move back to the Ars Elysia. Uh, oh <laughs> it's popping off, baby! We're, we're supposed to be the one of the one two punch. I know. Get those fucking balls! I know, man. All right, all right. Uh, okay. Incredible. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, we're just healing. <laughs> having a great time healing, yeah. meeting the woman who's creating the Factor of Malleus. It's great. Yeah. It's great. It's great. Um, incredible. Um, so. Back to the Oz uh, they go into this, the extra place created by, um, by Silaha, uh, where they start to question the, uh, uh, uh the plantar. It came here with its commander, the Solar Acastriel. One of the Dawn Father's best, one of the Dawn Father's lieutenants. The planetary there itself is It's in as a gar 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 The celestial all celestials are angry, like they were designed made to be good and to help fight evil. Now they are just only told all of them are I'm happy that they're just only told to stop. While a temporary alliance with those who they seek to bow fight it is just brokered. Mm -hmm. Give me a charisma mm. check. What's that? Oh. I'm gonna use lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Burn out these luck points. Mother! Ooh. 15. Is that is that right? Plus plus five, right? It's no, it's plus. it's that's a, that's saving. A savings, yeah. Right so it'll be yeah, it'll be plus five. So actually not even fifteen, that's mine. Oh. Um you reach out to attempt to alleviate this, you see that Garathron steps back and says, Garathron. Don't take it! It's mine! He, try, uh, he tries to um, use this thing to heal him of his anger, but he, Garathron is... is all. Please don't take it! I retract. You made us to be good. You made us to fight. It was supposed to be right. Sealing the betrayers, pu putting them in the shadows again. 
I have slain devils for a century thinking it was right. And then one day I am told to sheathe my sword. And Acastriel comes to those of us who wonder why and says, do you know what they are doing? Do you know what they're doing? It's a war to us. But it's a squabble to them. All right. Soon after, it takes its own blade and dispatches itself. And very quickly, using her turn to death, um, Emir uh, cast Speak with Dead. And in the like the edge of creation, like where the soul, the spirit of the soul, the spirit of the planet right now is, the the form of the matron appears. They ask some simple questions like, "Where is Acacio?" Apparently, he's hiding in one of the maidens' near the um, Factor um, Malleus. Near the base of AR itself, like they confirm that there that there's been additional. Forces aiding its protection. They will trigger the protocol. There is a dragon that they have enlisted in their service. Uh, <laughs> Y'all thought when I said 20th level it was going to be a fucking cakewalk? You know what I mean? <laughs> we were here to discuss our feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you can do that with some legendary actions coming down over the top, right? Um, <laughs> I thought there would be a zip line. <laughs> um, a taro, a, a shadow dragon. A That is okay. A shadow dragon, a dragon of death. Also, in this service, have come many uh, fays and fiends, which very hypocritical of the solar to rally for support by saying, "How oh, they're the gods!" And also, the father fought just make a choose between them, and to combat a choose, he. Uh, Te he teams up with seeing the very er enemy uh, they are designed to face. Kind of reminds me of the, of the plot of like I think it was like uh, the fifth uh, Star Trek movie. Hmm. And. It is entirely possible, though, that the Solar, who through through uh, the words, uh, uh, unwinning words of one of the other Prime is not there, that they are aware of the strategy of the mortal gods. And that uh, he was actually, that the, the Fat Solar, um, a, ca a Castiel was actually in the bar 20 minutes ago. And they try to get the information on about where the uh, protocols are stored, what the different locations and. To the Obtenebrator engine. Um, healing in 
uh, Exceletor Hospital with having just met uh, Cassida Previn, who's talked about the purpose, the Society of Primes, the purpose of using the Factorum Malleus to aid the Prime Deities. And we have just discovered the scribe and also Acastriel in this plan to, to spill the beans and reveal your counter plan uh, to the Magistry of Aeor. This is all happening simultaneously as you communicate across the telepathic bond to everybody. Okay, so um, in this moment, <laughs> you all surge forward. Oh, there's a lot of shit going on. Um, <laughs> so I, here's what here's what I'm gonna say right now. Um, uh, I'm gonna go uh, get a battle map <gasps> and I need you two to roll initiative. Holy oh. shit. Get a Us? little. Uh-huh. I need right. a zapper. Yeah, it's gonna zapper. Fucking yeah. <laughs> You'll get a zapper. Kyle, do we have a zapper? They're always the minute. Yeah, it's right there. there. It they know. They, no, it runs. It us. runs the minute. It knows. Uh, it knows its thread is ending. <laughs> I'm trying to remember if anything happens to my uh, initiative because of my class. I'm gonna double check it. This is. Oh, look at this map. Little map. Oh, no. oh, the turtle! Oh, oh no! Oh my gosh! Is oh that boy! Spiky tort? Look at him! Spiky turtle, nasty boy. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Wait, here's Tashar. Oh, I very, can't reach it. Can you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where's, where's homeboy? Where's the button? It's, it's, no, I'm telling you. The minute we bust out the zapper, it runs away. There, there. It came to it me. It runs. It runs. It knows. It knows. It really does. I think it, it really does. does. Okay. We're gonna. <laughs> You're just gonna. Okay. Rat. You want, <laughs> what's that? Oh, you want to hand it? Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Um, <laughs> uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to need everybody to roll what? initiative. Yeah, I'm going to need everyone to roll initiative. Uh, here we go. Hold on a second. Yeah, huh? Yeah, huh? Okay, okay. Because I don't know what you all are capable of as you're, sure. as you're doing your stuff. Um, right. You get advantage. You get advantage. <laughs> Oh, wow. This okay. is the second one this die has rolled when, uh, of the get three it. times I've get rolled it. Get it out. Blip it. Two. Oh, no, no, I've got I, I brought four. four. Okay. I, I bought all of you. Do not have advantage on initiative. Mm -hmm. I, just I went to, like, at, when we were at the library. Uh -huh. With my Ew! Daughter and her daughter were there. Her daughter oh, worked God. Oh, my God. I bought a bunch of dice. <laughs> I walked out. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to go around, and I want everyone to tell me uh, what you rolled. Uh, Asha, what did you get? Six. Uh, what did uh, Silaha get? 22. 22. Um, what did uh, Trist get? 12. 12. Uh, what did the Emissary get? 24. Ooh. 24. Uh, what did Aiden get? Listen, if you're going to heal people, they got to be hurt. Yeah. So I rolled a six. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and what did Amira get? Fifteen. Fifteen. So we're going to be. Do, uh, so the way this is going to work is not everybody's present in this battle, but basically, even though you're talking telepathically, this is all happening literally simultaneously. So the information has to come out on your turns, essentially, as we go through combat. Um, uh, What'd you roll? Fifteen. Oh, I can't believe I didn't write the order down. I always write the order down. Oh. Um, hell yes. Uh, right. What form is the uh, is Asha wearing? <laughs> oh, I'm I'm gonna I'm wearing my 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 human my cool. human suit. Uh, so these are some placeholder uh, minis here for the time being. But um, as we rush in, so uh, uh, we're gonna start as the pipe bursts and rushing through this vent, you are able to leap out through this place. Um, uh, as you leap into it, um, you find yourself uh, moving into this central engine. Two massive uh, spell guard constructs bar your way, and you see a mage towards this pool of inky shadow in the back. Um, I am gonna need the emissary. You are gonna, uh, sorry, what was, what was your, you rolled 24? Yes. So emissary, you are first to go. Um, <laughs> as uh, Tishar cuts open a hole in this vent, begins to rush through the pipe. As she steps, you see wherever she steps, the metal buckle and bends as she seems to like increase her own weight Ooh. and size moving forward. I can't wait to see the fight. Um, and uh, uh, Emissary, uh, you are gonna be first to act. And where am, 
Uh, you bust out of this vent and see a big old fucking construct right in front of you. Wow. wow. Not for long. <laughs> uh, the, over here, uh, you see a sort of horrified arc mage that appears to be tending to this pool of inky shadow as this massive engine hums, uh, turns around to look at you, uh, sort of shocked and horrified. You get a sense that if that arc mage gets their turn, that uh, that's that that will be quite bad. Okay. Um, well, that that settles that. Um, the inventory goes in after her, the uh, mage, her strike, uh, uh, uses like uh, uh, the seeds it's carrying her, the inter- some of the couple of seeds it's carrying, it turns them into these nasty bats. Manage to use one lo- a special feature that allows that one as weapon to bring him closer as part of a grapple. Mm-hmm. Rune on your axe, written in the language of the gods, which just means denial as though they had written a thousand pages of petition to some divine judge to be able to warp reality and got a one word response. <laughs> no. <laughs> Whew, that's a hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, so that's a um, 11 for damage. Mm-hmm. Um, but because uh, I'm using scales of justice, I also, uh, on the strike, ensnare him and draw him essentially into grapple where he's pulled into the maelstrom of these cutting stones and he takes, I'm essentially chewing him alive. Incredible. So that's another 12 damage. Whee! Okay. The Arc Mage managed to, um, Uh, get some more information, and they, re- and based on her own knowledge of arcane stuff, uh, the um, uh, Amira is able to determine that what they're looking for, it may not be scattered out throughout the city, but because one thing she know knows, wizards like the in the major cities are greedy of their knowledge, and won't create many uh, backups and stuff of that, in case they can follow the wrong hands. Unless, so this would mean there is must be some sort of scribe, as I'm saying, to transmute and spread the knowledge and send out knowledge, but only record it at, at server in emergencies. Meaning, as for right now, the protocol has, is in one location, and knowing how the, them as they do, it's likely that it's near the um, cloaking thing. The cloaking place. This is the thing. Okay, okay, wait, I have an idea. Go on. Okay. <clears throat> My dearest, flying through the air. Yeah. Uh, circling above. Yeah. Can it, he, can he fly down? and go in and see where they've gone through the tunnel flying. I would say that's a bit of a stretch unless we hadn't just done a whole scene about birds finding this tree. So I think that's exactly... (laughs) We've got people. (laughs) We got... I think your raven literally hears like two small finches come along either side and bend it towards this tree and we watch as a raven descends and begins to fly through the stony root-covered tunnel uh, and can appear here in this space. Great. 
who I can see. Since she can see through the eyes of Dearest and has a good idea where it is because of that, the one they did with the tree, was able to locate send in Dearest and cast Arcane Gate so that the the she and Sil can enter the fight. Who I can see yes, through his eyes. Yes, you can see. Okay. Having just had a death, I feel imbued with extra power. I'm going to cast Arcane Gate. And in front of me, put one. Mm-hmm. And in that room, through Dearest's eyes, I'm going to put the other. Yes, you- no. Uh, <laughs> what is your, what is the. Up Amira's robes and kind of burst from the. Uh, so Emissary has movement. Uh, so it's poor. Again, just to kind of clarify that the scribe is in this, is beneath this. Is uh, beneath this. Beneath room. this. So there's a right. big engine here. You think that the scribe is down underneath. Underneath this, so this room. I'm going to then. You use... kind of realize in the, in your arcane construction of it, you're like, oh, they put the big broadcast system under their hide everything yeah. engine. So you're like, oh, this thing is already. It's pr- like in your head, you're doing like complex equations, like. Oh, the thing that is hiding everything probably has the broadcast network sewn into it. The magical threads that this information would travel along. So you're like, of course they would need it in this other device. Phenomenal. So, yeah. So I'm then going to cast Dimension Door. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> Which yeah, allows me to essentially teleport myself to any current location, you know, and within you range. Can you, right? Yeah, you yeah. can. So <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's essentially what I'm gonna do. Um, you are both slightly nauseous. I'm just gonna say that right now. It's like, whoa, that's a lot of time. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> incredible. So yeah, moving through. You see, like, puts the things on the board instantly, takes them. Away. <laughs> yeah, you both. Yeah, so emissary, you're like, you got. They do locate this scry thing, a multi-limb thing. Uh, a connected bomb with many compartments in it for the parchment. And now he just has to take it down. Um, it's also now we find out what the... Um, Sorcerer subclass. He has. He has the uh, uh, the clockwork soul. Of it. I guess I should be honest. Oh. work or not but what you end up seeing essentially is within me um my eyes go purple and you just hear (laughs) and suddenly this massive force of magic just dispels and you see these arms come through kind of grab onto this grab onto what this um aormaton is and just wrench it into me and it's like (laughs) Mission complete. And you just see me go, oh my. Uh, Pac Man (laughs) feet? You just fucking (laughs) Kirby'd. Uh, unbelievable. Um, the, uh, the articulated arms shudder and boom, collapse, and you see that all of the scrolls of parchment within this Aormaton, almost like player piano sheets, just 
come in and zoom, uh, and you can hear the rustling of parchment folding in it's upon like itself. It's still going. <laughs> yeah, I think you still have yeah, the fucking still, data yeah, running. Everything is in me, yeah. Um, uh, give me, that is so fucking incredible. Also, give me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, oh. Absolutely, mm, absolutely. Oh, 22. You are able to metabolize as the knowledge enters your chest, the heart of the arch heart. You hold within you a poem so beautiful that it could convince reality to kill a god. Mm. <laughs> oh my god. I got these. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. <laughs> you see? Fuck parts. You <laughs> see? I'm going to say the scribe, as all that is wrenched out, just goes like, that's proprietary. <laughs> and, uh, and then just sort of like, it's not, it's a full sentient being, but I think this dispelling is enough to knock an Aormaton unconscious. So you see this being just kind of sits there in unconsciousness. Um, Incredible turn, gang! <laughs> yeah, that's my turn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'll end your turn, right? Um, okay, um, the next to go. The heart, the heart, it casts silence, uh, which basically. Uh, Which the guardian fails to get the two guardians to the counter, and uh, the archmage or used his reaction to uh, cast shield spell, a, sp a shielding spell before. of casting ninth level spells <laughs> the is going to make an athletics the check. The MVP port. <laughs> because that's all this motherfucker can do. So you need to beat a seven. Yeah, basically, so many high level spells will cry book. But also, the sound spell is brutal on them. Uh, that is a 17, which is a really good roll, to which this Archmage adds nothing with a 10 strength. Oh, hilarious. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so you need to beat a 17 to keep him from breaking the grapple. Oh, four or more. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, hilarious. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on one mm -hmm. second. Mm -hmm. So I rolled a three, which gives me a total of 18, no, 16. Okay. Um, but I have... Uh, Oh no, that's a strength check. Never mind, never mind. Okay. So you're, ro you're rolling athletics. So you got to. Right. Uh, is there anything you can add to that sixteen? I don't think so. Okay. So unbelievably, <laughs> this scrawny, <laughs> this scrawny little archmage, uh, who cannot cast any fucking spells, has to use a full action to get away. Um, so excited. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Gets all the way over here. Now... Only has a bonus action. Uh, so that's considered disengage, what he did? Oh shit! No, you get you would get an attack of opportunity, attack opportunity as as the mage uses movement to leave. So you can go ahead and take an attack. But the, was that reaction on the, the the shield? Oh yes, you've used your reaction on your turn. So yours will reset on your next initiative. Got it, yeah, got yeah, it. yeah. Um, uh, it's so. Well, I'm gonna uh, do it to him, so I gotta do it to him. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's also so fucked up because Nick doesn't play like at this much 5e and is already a master, <laughs> like, master rules adjudicator. I'm like, that's sick, man. Uh, Absolutely. Um, uh, unbelievable. Um, uh, okay, awesome. So uh, the Archmage is gonna get a little bit farther away and uh, get out of the range of silence, and then it's going to go. <laughs> 
Uh, and Misty Step. Did, did uh, he burn his action, though? Burn, this is bonus action, Misty Step. Oh, okay, so bonus action. So action, misty. athletics check, movement without attack of opportunity, uh -oh. and uh, Misty Steps and vanishes, but you know the spell. Um. Still a hot, uh, Missy steps to the chamber down below. Or no, or, or no, 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 not from the chamber down below. Back into the field. Cause uh, tell me teleports those at the hostel to the fight. We'll go first, Trist. You are first to act here. Um, uh, uh, it, suddenly being in this room as Cassidy teleports you all here. Uh, is there anything that you do in this moment? All right, I take it in. <laughs> What's the plan here? What, what, what are we doing? What have you, what are we doing? Find the mage. <laughs> or, I'm, I'm not in the room. <laughs> We're all tele <laughs> we're all telepathically, yeah, we have to, but we just lost somebody we need to catch. Okay, yeah. sort of seeing the orb, um, that's all I can sort of go on at this point, and I'm going to cast. Just cast Black Guy well to make sure the next person also makes has advantage. Um, Uh, so uh, the guy, the guardians are going after two of them. One of them goes after Trist, and the other one goes after the turtle. Who, when injured, said, "Ah, others was who worship me, you know, god of torture." Uh, Tr Tristan uh, uses a binding spike on a sling. Shot. Something that sort of slipped into her father, her, her husband's jacket by one of her children. Mm. Automata piece of shit. I'm going to run over and try and leap my way across to get to uh, the emissary. Hell yes. Um, uh, How much moving is that? That's five, 10, 20, 25. That's about 30 feet? 30 feet, yeah. Perfect. I'm going to land on the emissary. I'm going to reach down and grab almost as if my hands reach into your chest and this big metal, or about, about this big. And Asha creates a, uh, well, I think they described it as like this metal circle with, with spikes on it. I think they've heard it as like a punch blade. And this spear of pure briar. It goes after a mage. Uh, Ty knows that, uh, that it, it it's this only has a 30 foot range, so he's likely so they could find and realize there's w w one place that nearby that, that could possibly hide it uh, are the bubbles of that black substance. Goes at it with a with hit, uses a stunning strike to tend to. Uh, to uh, we get it to have it start floating. Still alive though, and and goes as a flurry, flurry of balls. Get the how you want to do this. Uh, it going and she goes into wolf form. Form and tears out stump for the kill.
and Trish attacks going after the uh, prior to the uh, Aiden casts Guiding Bolt to take it out, get to give uh, Trish up to uh, give a um, Trisha, Trisha, her advantage on the next attack. Mm. And aids her more by using a feature allows her to dig a bonus of attack. Do uh, 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 cast another uh, guiding bolt and give her an extra attack with her bonus action. And with that final attack, it is to destroy the uh, ten. Outside, they can hear the winds of the storm begin to blow. They immediately, like, use her article. And as soon as they're out, they hear <laughs> as many of the mages and friends of their go to the same a down archmage and a destroyed device. But they're out there before anyone can see who did it. You know that. And with that, this uh, recap is done. And with X one thing, my homebrew of the thing. For this one, uh, this was originally. Uh, uh, this is a. Uh, an artist subclass, which was originally supposed to be two different subclasses. Uh, one sort of like a, uh, like one that replaces their body with uh, arcane devices and stuff, like a cyborg, and a psychic. Effort. But because I was out of time and had some good, interesting connotations to it, I just combined it to the cyborg. I know, terrible pun. But getting into it, and I definitely want to argue while we're in, in a, a one of, of the great cities of the Age of Quorum. Uh, artificers are artists, and magic items, they're art. A true artist's greatest wish is to be one which, with their art, body, and mind. Uh, you get your um, your your cyborg spells. Uh, I, 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 this where you get the the subclass at level th your third level of artificer. Um, with starting with your first level spells of mind sliver and zephyr strike. Then you get uh, at level five your second level spells detect thoughts and locate object. You get uh, thir third level spell for third level spells. You get at level n nine. You get sending and counter spell because who doesn't want counter spell? Level thirteen gives you your fourth level spells, free movement and locate creature. And finally, at level seventeen, you get access to your fifth level spells, including. Rarity's Telepath Bong and Skill Empowerment. Now for the cornerstone feature of, of this um, Arcane Integration, else, which is also happens at level 3. Uh, you can merge with a magic item, integrate it into part of your body. You may integrate an, an item into one of your arms, one of your legs. Your torso, or even your head. E though each body part can only have one item integrated at a time, M also means that you can integrate a maximum of six items. To integrate or deintegrate one an item, you must take at least one long rest and make both an, an arcana check and a medicine check. DC for both checks is 20 plus the item's rarity value, which equal, which is a 4, four if it's a common. For uncommon, you get, it gets an 8. 
Rare a 12, very rare at 16, and finally legendary gets 20. Artifacts you are you may not uh, integrate with. If either of the checks failed, immediately take another long rest. Us and make new checks and add the result to previous checks, repeating the process until you both tolls a CTC. Uh, okay, well, if something it doesn't say here, I meant to add in is that should you do a ch uh, have to continue on to another check, but only have one of those checks to do, the other ones already has the appropriate amount of uh, things, you do the remaining check at advantage. However, this is a long process stuff, and what's more, this is the, 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 the integration is the only benefit you get out of it at, for any of those long rests. Literally, no other benefit you can, is taken for those rest. It's tricky, so you gotta be careful, it, especially since you gotta find time to integrate. For an item, it cannot be in few, be an infused item, like something you just made for, uh, you know, because you're. This is our visit class. Um, it cannot be a consumable or limited use. Things like it has a number of charges which cannot be re recharged. Or have a rarity value that, what you know, up above, uh, as we saw up above, when divide before then add one exceeds your PV. Like you could do comments at most, but you must wait to get a a, a precision bonus of three to get onto common items. Interesting thing about this: if it, they'll they'll still take attunement requirements into action. However. A attunement slot used to attune to an integrated um, uh, an integrated item is can also be used to attune to an unintegrated item, but you can only have one item's properties active at a time, and must use a was a I think it was a bonus action or to uh, or to switch which one is activated. To switch the end. However, you get a number. You the switching uh, uh, in uh, between the different uh, like every time you switch to one item, one whichever item is activated, right? and this is for one song that can only be done a number of times equal to your uh, to ha half your artificial level, like. I love playing. That means you can do a maximum of ten times per long rest, in which you get regain all uses. Only your limbs can have. You can uh, match your hands, which are weapons, can only be integrated into a limb. Though, if your your character is now she has a tail, it can the then the tail counts as both a limb to integrate a weapon to, but, it's, but it takes up the slot for your torso. And for every... Uh, also, you get... In addition to having the... You... Uh, now, for the extra benefits of integrating a weapon instead of just having it on your person, uh, besides it potentially having more attunement things, even if you have to switch. Uh, for every integrated item, you gain a plus one to your AC and all intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. 
Next, you go to level five, psychic systems. Like, you get to the other half. Like, it's like both a cyborg and like a psychic. So, you can cast any of your cyborg spells as a ritual. Okay, that I got the package alter this. Like, that's supposed to say you can cast any of your cyborg spells as a ritual so long as they do not do deal damage themselves. That's how that. Um, next, you have an up at level nine. You have up link strike. Whenever you make an attack with an integrated item or an infused one, it actually applies to both. Should the attack hit, you deal extra uh, you deal extra second damage equal to the item's rarity value. Uh, divide by four. Uh, uh, plus one die who sides equal the rarity value. The divide by four plus one. Like say you it has a rarity value. It is a a rare. It has twelve, so that makes it a. Three plus uh, a one d eight. If the integrated item is that something you would normally attack with, it is considered an ar an unarmed strike. It follows those rules. I mean, it's worded that way so they can like should you have like a fighting style or be like come up. With a monk, or something like that, or like some racial technology you enhance arm strikes, it will still work with it. Then you get two features at level fifteen: psychic upload and arcane download. For psychic upload, you okay, you as an action can transfer your clutches to. A creature or object created or summoned using your artificer conjuration or transmutation spells. You retain your uh, your intelligence, wisdom, and charisma stats. Your you can use all your senses though through whatever you you conjured. Your uh, spell casting and. The properties of one integrated item also are retained in the new thing. It's a level 15, like high level. Like the uh, most of the spells held aren't at level 15 yet. Your physical body becomes comatose while using this seizure. The effect of the seizure ends if you use your action to end it. If you use it, the seizure for one minute, or the creature or object is destroyed or desummoned. If the effect ends without you using your action to do it, like if you willfully end it, if you don't willfully end it early, it, you cannot move or take action until next turn, it, as a wave of fragility uh, uh, sweeps over you. Basically, you have suffered the effects of having haste and oath. Same thing. If your body is at zero HP but not dead, you remain in the creature object until you die or regain HP. And as for arcane download, you can send a bonus action to spend a spell slot to cause one magic item that uses charges within 30 feet of you to regain a number of charges equal to the level of the spell slot. The spell slots. The spent spell slots level. And with that, I thank you for joining me. This is Free and Air Rudimentia. I wish you good fortune on the quest of life.